Hi, I'm Robin Hardin, and this is Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding dreams and visions. My guest today, Joycey, is from India, and she is going to share dreams and testimonies which are truly amazing. Anytime anyone comes to the Lord, it's a miracle. But when Joycey's husband came to know Christ as his Savior, he was the first believer in his entire village. And Bill Woodson is going to be throwing out a different perspective on a scripture. You will want to catch it. I'm here with my guest today from India. Her name is Joycey. Joycey, thank you for coming and being on the program. Mm -hmm. So, do you have dreams? Do you hear from the Lord in dreams? Actually, uh, my uh, marriage, I had a dream, but that's fulfilled. When I dream about it, I did not know that is from the Lord, but actually it was from the Lord, the dream. We are serving the Lord among His people group. But I have been seeing some of the dreams, it's like not uh, every day, but time to time, I see the Indian uh, stars, like Bollywood stars, mm -hmm. sometimes the cricket, cricketers, actually they come to my dream and then they are um, like you know, they are in a uh, discipleship training school with the YWAM, they're sitting in the, and they're not, n no one is Christian background, all are from different backgrounds. Oh, okay. So this kind of dream I always see, and the next day I tell my family and they say, oh yeah, which person you saw now last night? Uh -huh. So that is like, no, it doesn't stay, it like goes from days to days, right. but in between it comes to me. So he's showing you people from different backgrounds knowing that he's bringing them to YWAM, yeah. which we know is a Christian organization. Yeah. And so he's showing you that your ministry is going to reach people of so many different backgrounds and faiths. That's what it's about, is, is letting them see the light, showing them the truth. Yeah. How exciting. Does your family, you say, they say, who did you see? Are they, do they believe you? Do, how do they react? Like, no, for them, it's like, no, how come mama is like seeing all this, like, no, because one of our be best cricketer, actually he wa used to be a Indian uh, uh, captain. Wow. So he's my favorite one, and I have seen him two or three times in my dream. And these he's are sitting in the <laughs> classroom. Wow! And these are like athletes that we would have here. Is that what you mean by when you say in stars, celebrities? Celebrities, yeah. yeah. And so even though you can't go see them in <laughs> the natural, <laughs> yeah. God brings them there. Yeah. Wow. And which is cool is they're sitting in a classroom. Are you teaching? Uh, actually. Um, I used to work with the DTS, uh -huh. so that's uh, but uh, now I'm in a ministry and I teach Bible studies and I go, yeah. So that's what the Lord is showing you, that He's bringing not just the common people, yeah. but He's bringing celebrities, important people. He, you're going to reach people that other people are going to know, people that mean something in your country. Yeah. So when they see a change, when the population sees a change in these celebrities' lives, mm -hmm. it's going to be Jesus. And you are going to have a very big part of that. That's what he's showing you. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. real cool. Eventually, uh, actually, when I heard about you and when I like, no, I said, okay, this is a one of the area actually I, I really always think about like, no, why it's happening to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's letting you know that that's part of your call. Okay. You know, we all have a certain job that we do in ministry. Yes. Yeah. And we don't get to choose who he's going to send to yeah. us. That's true. <laughs> but mm -hmm. he's going to place you in, in areas and situations where important people, people that the public knows, okay. are going to be coming to you and hearing the word and, mm -hmm. and then spreading it out. And see, lives change. Yeah. Wow. How long have you been in the ministry? 27 years. Oh, so you're not a new convert at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not, uh, wow. 27 with Youth with a Mission. Because uh, uh, India is uh, like more Hinduism. Yes. The so most like Nahai is a Hinduism. Christianity is a very like less yeah. percentage. Yeah. yeah. So you've got your work cut out for you. Yes. <laughs> 
God has always given his people a dream. Didn't he do it for Abraham? <laughs> you know what he did for Abraham? He started planting a seed in his heart. It's a dream. He said, come here, Abraham, get out of that tent. That tent's blocking your vision. Get out of that tent. And so he got him outside. He said, look into the heavens. Look up there. What do you see? Count the stars if you can. Lord, that's a lot. Of, I don't even have a child. Yep, keep looking. Focus on the dream that I have for you. Join Pastor Johan at Love's Way Church Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. My guest today, Joycey, has been sharing just some real precious insights about walking with the Lord and connecting with our Father. And her husband is also a believer, and apparently he has an awesome testimony. So, Joycey, tell us how your husband came to know the Lord. And my husband, actually, Nanesh, he born and brought up in a Hindu family. So he actually was a very spiritual man. Every morning he'll get up, he'll go to the four different temples, and he will worship there, and he will come, and he will have his first tea. And then only he will start working. Even he built a temple every year, festival for that uh, uh, temple also. Three to 4,000 people used to come. But then, same time, he was actually caught up with the different friends and some of them were bad, and then they used to have a fight. He has one team, one group, and there's another group, mm -hmm. and they both group used to have the fight. Mm -hmm. And his life become a, like, you no know, kind of like, you no know, one day he might kill them or they will kill him. Right, right. That kind of dangerous situation he came. One night he came, he was coming from the movie, and two boys uh, sitting and talking about Jesus. They did not invite him, but he went to them. And he went and he stood there, and they were talking about Jesus, that Jesus is the only God. Jesus is the God who heals. Jesus is like that. Jesus is like that. And he was hearing everything, and he got very, very angry. And he said, this is not true. This is, if Jesus is the true God, Jesus is the healer, then why there is a hospital, there are doctors are there. Mm. They should not be there. This everything, even in our Hindu book has written everything, but it happened in the past. It doesn't happen now. So why are you talking about this? And he gave a lot of bad words to them. At night he couldn't sleep. Only the name is coming in front of him, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Then he went next day to the work. He comes home, he's trying to sleep. But again, he couldn't sleep. Again, the name Jesus, Jesus is coming. Again, third night, the same thing <laughs> happened. Then he was saying, if Jesus is the real God, I am right now in a dangerous situation. He should also bring me out from this situation. And those boys were talking to him that night. They mentioned one of the church. That's why he decided, tomorrow at church, I will go there. That's why next day he went to the church. When he reached to the church, they were just preparing for the service. He went and he sat there, and next to him one man came with his son. And his son was very sick. He had a high fever, he was not opening his eyes, and he was wrapped with the bed sheet. And Nanesh looked at him and said, your son is very sick, why are you here? You should take him to the hospital. This is the spiritual place, you should not be here. And this man said, no, my son, actually from two months he's sick. And I took him to the many different doctors, but nobody is able to help him. That's why I brought him here, because somebody told that Jesus will heal him. So I came here. Nani said, you are full man. You should not be here. And he left him there. Then worship finished, message finished. Pastor had a gift 
to pray from the pulpit and people were getting ill. Uh -huh. And this boy, he, uh, pastor prayed there and he removed his bed sheet and he got healed. And he opened his eyes. His father started crying. So it, like now this two months, this son was not opened his eyes. So father also started crying and Nani saw the whole thing there. Nani saw all other miracles happening there. And he was thinking, what is happening there? This man is praying from there and things are happening here. This all things was happening. And then suddenly, pastor started speaking. There's a man here who comes from this, 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 this place. His life is in a dangerous situation. He came here to testify Jesus. Nani said, this, he's talking about me mm -hmm. because he's taking my village name. Then he did not get up. He put his head down and he didn't. The pastor announced again three times, he did not get up. Then, lastly, the pastor from the pulpit came to him and said, is that you? And Nanish was like strengthless. He said, how you know? And he <laughs> said, you don't know me, I don't know you, but Jesus know you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the one who told me about you. And tomorrow, by 11 o'clock, the people who are behind you, trying to kill you, is going to come and the fight is going to get over. And that was the time Nanesh started thinking, I came here, but those people didn't come here. How this is going to happen? And actually, that, that same place, because he realized he's the Jesus, is the only God. Because he was doing all the idol worship, he was doing all the different festivals, he was worshipping all his the favorite gods and goddesses. But he realized there was no peace, there was no joy into his life. But as soon as the pastor prayed for him, the peace came into his life. The joy came to his life. And he accepted Jesus Christ there. He went back home and next day, actually, these people came to him. And they said, now we are going to stop the fight. You go your way. She, and we are going our way. And it's a, then it was 100% for Nanesh, Jesus is the living God. Yeah. And then he, he started following Jesus. But another thing happened. Because he comes from the background where his uncle was a te temple priest. His another uncle was the village authority person. And he was known as doing all the idol worship. And now he stopped. So I, they wanted to kill him. So I, it went for the one year that they will try to come and to uh, kill him. But somebody will come and his friends and tell him, run away from here because your uncles are coming, your uncles are coming. Like this one year, he went through the uh, persecution by his own family, by his own relatives. And then lastly, when the relatives and the, uh, his uncles thought, He's, we cannot find him. Every time we go and he runs from there. That time they decided, now the last thing we can do it, we can kick his family from the village. Then when Nanesh came to know, now my family is going to kick out from because of me, he started feeling because they don't know Jesus, where I'm going to take them, what I will do it. So he left the home. And he left the home he had no idea where to go, how to do. But he has in his heart, I want to, I want to know this Jesus. I want to study this Jesus. I want to know more about this Jesus. That was the desire he had. And that's why he, because in India, there's a state called Goa. It's a known as a Christian state. So he thought, I will go to Goa and I'll get some uh, knowledge or some study about Jesus there. So he went to Goa and then he realized the language is different. But then he went to the jungle. Morning he used to go to jungle. The whole day he will sit in the jungle and he only will read the Bible. Within the three days, from Genesis to Revelation, he read the Bible. The snakes used to be around him. The monkeys will jump down. A lot of noises will be coming. But he was not scared because he just wanted to know Jesus. And then third day when he finished, he came down to the bus stand 
and he met a one boy and he told him to go to this another place, another town. You might get help with the one church there. So he ended up going to that church and that pastor, he shared with the pastor his story, what happened. The beginning pastor didn't believe him, said no, many people comes and they cheat us mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. so a pastor didn't want to help him. But as he started walking, his wife heard the voice and his wife said, help this guy. So his wife called him back and they kept him and this couple, the pastor and his wife, Pastor Samudre they named, they sent him. He said, I want to only know Jesus. My name is Tiffany and um, I just wanted to uh, say a little something about the Dream Catcher, Catch Your Dream Journal. Now before this book, I did used to dream, but it was probably maybe like one dream a week, like one good dream a week that had like substance in it. Well, after I got this book, I was dreaming every single night. This book filled up with my dreams within three months and I was in need of another book. And so I said to Miss Robin, I said, it's like your books are like a dream catalyst that enables you to just dream more and hear more from the Lord. I needed another book, so I got two so that I can be prepared. I should probably get three. But it's a great book and you should make sure that you get one. Planted. You ask the question, planted. The scripture says we are planted by the rivers of living waters. Now, a lot of people use that differently than I use it. I like to use it like this. I'm planted because of the living waters, not beside of the living waters. Wherever the Lord chooses to use me. Now, remember, Paul was on a ship and it was going down and he was imprisoned. But God was there to use him because God had planted him there because he was on a journey. And we're on a journey. You're on a journey. And you're planted because of the living waters. Till next time, catch your dream. When I met him, I got so excited. You know why? Because Nanish is the first believer from Maharashtra, from the people group of Vadar. He's so the he's first the believer. He's yeah, the he's the origin. <laughs> he's the first believer from that people group. God gave him a scripture, Matthew 9, 36 and 38. It says, when Jesus, saw, Jesus turned and saw the multitude, and he felt the compassion Passion. because the sheep were without shepherd. And then when Nanish saw that one, and later on, actually literally, he saw the vision, all the Vadars, he saw in front of him. And he started asking the Lord, what is this? And God said to him, these are your people. I'm sending you as a shepherd for your people. So you go as a shepherd to this people group. And Nanish started fighting with Jesus mm -hmm. because he said, Lord, you send me to any other people group, but don't send me to this people group right. because they are the ones who persecuted me right. first. <laughs> so I don't want to go there. But he cannot fight with Jesus a long time. <laughs> so Jesus, he asked, give me a grace to go to this people group. And then we started. Then our marriage story is a very unique and very beautiful, very special, because I come from a Christian background, he come from the locust background. There was no way that I can marry with him. But actually, Jesus gave me a dream about my marriage, and it fulfilled whole dream. And I, we married in 97 December. We started working among those people group in 2000. And when we started working, it was very difficult to work among them because they have their own God and goddesses, mm -hmm. they have their family God. But in 2004, 
a breakthrough came. And the first group ba took baptism with, uh, for 10 people. Then after four months, again 10 people. Again four months, 10 people. So people started baptizing, taking baptizing. God started opening the doors. So I, right now we have ministry in um, Maharashtra, different parts, of, uh, different cities, different parts of Maharashtra, and another state also. And it started from a one, one person. God gave vision to him. Now we have more than 6,000 Vadar people came to the Lord. Hallelujah! This is Bobby Hayden Jr. coming to you from Lebanon, Tennessee. We're here at Joseph's Storehouse praying for folks. And I don't know about you, but I was thoroughly touched today. This is Andre from New York City. He made his way to Lebanon, Tennessee to pray for people today, distribute food. Andre, what happened today? It just touched my heart to be able to just to see, hear people's stories just to come meet them where they are in their lives and share with them the freedom that God has for them. Joseph's Storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need. Please choose blessings, not the curse. Choose the blessings. Each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month to help distribute food and God's word to hundreds of hungry families. You see, Jesus is in the miracle business. Then in 2014, he went through the big uh, uh, surgery because of the traveling. His spinal cord actually got injured and his vertebrae was out of place. And because of that, he was getting paralyzed. That's why he had to go through the operation. But then God has his way again. He was restricted by doctor not to travel. That's why he was asking the Lord, Lord, I want to keep working. I want to keep going. I want to keep sharing the gospel. And while he was watching one of the Bollywood movie, God started speaking to him. You can make the movie. And he started having this thought that in Bollywood movie, most of the time, there is a idol worship songs. Idol songs are there. But there's no, no, till today, there was no, a worship song of Jesus uh, there. There was no direct gospel preached uh, through the uh, Bollywood movie. So he started having that thought. I want to do something like that. And God helped him to write the script. Within the three weeks, he wrote the script. And then God provided us some different people can help us to make the movie. And 2014, we produced the first Bollywood movie with the gospel. And it is released in 10 different cities. Now, right now, Nani, she's actually working for the uh, translation work, Bible translation in Vadari language. So you guys can pray for him because 6,000 people is nothing. We are not satisfied with the right, 6,000 right. because in India, 7 million people are there, Vadar. My state, almost 4 million are there. And my uh, city, 300,000 are there. So 6,000 is nothing. We need many more people yes, yes. to come. We need many more workers to work with us. Yes. We want to raise the, we are ra raising the local leaders. But local leaders are not educated. Right. So I, we right. have to give them a keep training mm -hmm. and to raise them. Right. So I, we need many more prayer supporters. And you guys can pray for us. It's just fascinating. I, I keep thinking of Abraham and, and God saying, look at the stars. Hmm. You're going to have that many children. That's what I think of when I hear about you and your husband. I mean, okay. he's the first in his tribe, in his yeah. ever. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's, just, hmm. that's unheard of. That's, I mean, everyone in America, literally or you know, figuratively, Someone in their family was a believer. I mean, somewhere. Yeah. I mean, what a testimony. And no one can refute that. I mean, this is what happened in his life. Yeah. And he can, people who knew him before can, can vouch for it. And yeah. what a testimony. Okay. Yeah, yes. you guys are unstoppable. Let me just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
How, yes, how yeah. encouraging. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me here. Mm. Yeah, it's it was, nice to meet you also. I, I will try to come back. Yes. Oh, it was yes, awesome. Yes. It was awesome. Thank I you. Thought you guys were totally thrilled with that and just inspired. I mean, all of us have loved ones that, that we pray for, that maybe we even feel are hopeless. But you just heard of what we would consider a gang member who came to the Lord in, in, in sincerity. And look what he's done. He is, his life has been totally turned around. And if it can happen for him and for Joycey, it can happen to me too. Uh, I was looking at my hand and then I just saw, and this thought has come to my mind, and I spoke through that, that we born as a daughter, mm. okay? Then we become, like now, we get siblings. That's why we become a sister. Right. Then we get married. Then we become a wife. Then we have, un, uh, we become aunties. And mm -hmm. like, you know, for many nephews and nieces. Mm -hmm. And then we are framed for something. So we have so many roles to yes. play as a woman. Yes. And for two, for every role, has a different expectations so we need to hear from the Lord yes that is what is expected from every role mm -hmm. and especially as we become a mother yes it's the biggest role to be like no model in front of our children mm -hmm. so that's why the hearing God's voice is a very very important yes. for all of us yes that is so amazing because I have often said when I'm around my mom, I'm her best friend, because she's always been my best friend. When I'm around my dad, I'm his little girl, and I'm over 60. Mm -hmm. When I'm the oldest in my, of the siblings of eight children, I'm, I'm the older sister. Mm -hmm. When I'm with my husband, I'm his submissive wife. Mm -hmm. and, and to hear my sister mm -hmm. from across the globe yeah. say that, it's yeah. so important, important to know that. To know. Yeah. And the only way you can do it, like you said, the, the connection is hearing his voice. Yes. yes. Yeah. I love it. I love that you shared that. <laughs> <laughs> we are truly no. sisters. Yeah, I, says, I never thought, I never prepared whatever. I just like, no, I, I only prayed this morning and I said, oh, I don't know. But, and I never thought about this, the stories, what I shared mm -hmm. with you. It just like, no, just came even. Like now, coming here also, I had no idea what I'm going to speak. Mm -hmm. But I think so is the Holy Spirit has been bringing that yes. things in my mind. I want to encourage you to pray for your brothers and sisters all around the world. Some of them are facing things we will never encounter. But whatever it is you're going through, Jesus can turn it around. He's the Prince of Peace. Remember, we all have different roles to play. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to meet His expectations for each of those roles. Remember, you are planted by a river, but you're also planted because of the river. Catch us here next time on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams. <laughs>